Ah, ah, ah. Can't eat it. Through the reasons why I slash and when I slash. Well, then hold the moisture when it does rain to germinate any seeds you you've got see in there. Dry dirt, it would definitely be not like I just showed you there with that moisture below that armor. But because they're walking through here, they laid that down. That's what slashing does, but this is better than slashing. When it's laying down with the sap cycle, it throws up these nodes and promotes growth along that whole plant. There's so gonna be a lot of seed bank there sitting on the surface ready to germinate. That clove feet puts the weight in, breaks to disturb the soil. The weight pushes that seed bank into the soil where the moisture is. Planted that seed in with a hoof, giving that seed to soil contact. But not only now, that little bit of pugging is gonna help because when it does rain, you've got millions of pools like that that can hold the water. This is the most exciting part. Right here in front of me, a cow paddy. Now I'm adding the fertility back into yeah, the ground. The plants the need the microbes as much as the microbes need the plant. And like I said, that tugging motion, deeper root system, a lot healthier for ground. your plant. So it's regulating or controlling the soil temperature, which is great for the soil microbe and soil really light. Thick. It's not until you part it, you realize it's just clumps and then there's big areas of open areas of soil. That's desertification. G'day folks, Jason from the Outer Farm here. We're actually on the Outer Farm property today. What I'm going to be doing is, we're going to do a bit of a pasture walk first. I'm going to show you what the cattle have done. I'll put them in virgin ground. I've had this property eight years, nine years now, and they haven't been into this area before. So I'll go in and show you guys what they've done and why they haven't been in there. Then after that, we're gonna do a bit of slashing. I'm also gonna run through the reasons why I slash, what slashing has done for me, and also the critical time at which I slash. The area we're in now starts way down there yonder, beyond those timeless posts, comes up beside this barbed wire fence and opens out into this area here. The timeless posts you can see way over the back there and they go to the front of my property and all the way up this area would have to be 15 to 20 acres this has never been grazed before i've only ever slashed this three times a year for the last looking beyond that green pasture which just been laid down recently by the livestock there's that dead residue from the slashings that's the slashing clippings over eight years decaying down that's adding that litter bank i will expose the dirt there now that's probably only an inch thick because it's decaying down. Look at that moisture in the ground. We had rain probably a month ago and it's about 100 mil. That moisture is right on the surface. That's the value if you can't graze livestock on your property due to you haven't got your water set up or your fencing. Slashing is the best thing to keep it. Once it comes to seed, slash it, drop the seed bank back in and that'll add you drop the seed sorry off the plant when you slash it in and that'll build your seed bank up that thatch or armor will then hold the moisture when it does rain to germinate any seeds you've got in there i could take you across where the livestock are there now that's always been continually grazed we use that as a continual graze section when we haven't when we're letting our pastures rest in these paddocks here that would be a totally different account over there i could go over there and part the ground i've done it in previous videos before there's no thatch there because only gets that only gets slashed once a year and there's no thatch layer or litter bank on the ground like i just showed you i could go over there and part that ground and you would see dry dirt it would definitely be not like i just showed you there with that moisture below that armor it's dry dirt you can't even dig it with a teaspoon it's that dry and hard and compact because it's being continually grazed. As you can see, this rose grass beside me is above my head. That would have to be six foot in height. That has come to seed. It's dropped its seed multiple times. That would have to have had at least three seed drops. I have not slashed this paddock for about six months now. A lot of this, as you can see, is dead. Like I keep saying, there's only one job that a plant needs to do, and that is to repopulate. When it comes to seed, it, it drops the seed and drains an energy. So that is, that would not have any goodness in it whatsoever. The cow was with that, a whole paddock of that, 
they would they wouldn't eat it. They would selectively graze around at the green clippings to get energy. If you were forced to livestock and that's all they had, they would probably chew it because they're hungry, but they would lose weight, there's no energy. But I intentionally let this come to seed and get to this height. This is a perfect example why the higher the grass, the better. Like I mentioned, this has got no energy. So a lot of the livestock will forage around continuously, just keep moving to find that energy food. If you're cell grazing, you've got them in a cell, and you've been cell grazing for years like I have on the trial property, they don't need to forage around. They just stand still and bite, 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 because everything around it is in a vegetative state, green, full of energy. So they're not moving around constantly. The fresh salad bar is right there in front of it. Unlike this, which I intentionally had come to see, because I knew they would be foraging a lot and walking a lot, I knew they would lay a lot of this down. As you can see around me, a lot of this stalky grass is standing, but everything around, it's very patchy. It was all thick through here, six foot high, could not walk through here. Because they were constantly walking, this is the benefit they've done for me. Have a look at the amount of thatch laid down. All that is thatch. That's been, it's the same height as what I had six foot. But because they're walking through here, they laid that down. That's what slashing does, but this is better than slashing. Some of that, where it's been laid down, when they walk on it, will break the sap cycle. On a plant, when a livestock walks, it snaps it, breaks the sap cycle, and that decays and breaks down that plant. That's your organic material breaking down, going back, composting into the ground. But those that have just had a slight bend in them, they will still grow. You're still getting the sap cycle through the plant. And because you're still getting the sap cycle through the plant, what that does is a prime example right here. See these nodes or nodules on that each joint of that plant? It's growing vertical looking for the sun. There's one there. When this plant is directly up and down, the leaves go for the sun. When it's laying down, it throws up these nodes and promotes growth along that whole plant. So you're getting thicker pasture off one plant. Another advantage of bringing the livestock into graze, rather than just slashing it now and dropping that seed bank off, is the cattle walk through here. You'll notice on livestock, cattle anyway, they've got clove feet. So when they walk, you notice the feet go like this. As they put their foot down and put the body weight on, that, on those hooves, the clove feet opens up and spreads, which is beneficial here, because like I said, I haven't had livestock in here for eight years. That clove feet, as they're putting weight and it opens up, it's disturbing the soil. This has had a crust on it for years because it's had that thatch on top. Even though it's moist, that surface hasn't been disturbed. That clove feet is enough to just break and disturb that soil and break that crust. Because of the weight of the livestock also, as they break it, because it's been eight years, there's going to be a lot of seed bank there sitting on the surface ready to germinate. That clove feet puts the weight in, breaks to disturb the soil, the weight pushes that seed bank into the soil where the moisture is, and then they move on. Meantime, they come walking through again, the rest of the herd, and lay the thatch over. So you've got good soil to seed contact or seed to soil contact. Then the animals are laying the thatch on top of that to the arm of the soil to hold the moisture in longer when it does rain to help that seed germinate. If you look right there, that's just one example of the clove of the animal breaking the crust. This had probably four inches of rain whilst they're in here. So there's also slight pugging that's probably an inch thick but that has broken that soil planted that seed in with a hoof given that seed to soil contact but not only now that little bit of pugging is going to help because when it does rain you've got millions of pools like that that can hold the water and slowly let that water soak into the ground so a little bit of pugging is not bad this is the most exciting part right here in front of me cow paddy. Now I'm adding the fertility back into the ground. So whatever goodness was is this plant, 
the livestock have taken the goodness and taken their bit to grow, then they pass out back on the ground through the paddy. Like I mentioned, now this, after eight years, is finally getting the nutrient cycle put back into the ground. The microbes, the dung beetles and the worms will grab the paddy or grab the nutrients from that paddy, take it back into the soil. 12 months time, this is gonna be a totally different story. This is just used to growing, slashing, growing, slashing. This is now, with this mineral cycle, the plants are gonna be greener. You watch the legumes come out and all the variety of the plants will be grabbing that nutrient and growing back. You've got to get a cycle passing through the animal now, adding the nutrients back to the ground. Exciting. The benefit of having livestock grazing over the slashing as well is, I could slash this grass off now. It will grow back, but it's not promoting growth at a rapid rate. When a cow chews it, or livestock, what a cow does, it wraps its tongue around that pasture puts his tongue around and it rips the rips the plant off and starts chewing it that's why you get that flat spot at the ground what that does but as they're pulling it to snap it off that sends root extradates down through that plant the plant's stressing because it's think it's going to get pulled out the ground so it sends root extradates and what that does is the microbes below the ground sense the plant stressing and it grabs the nutrients required to plant to grow that plant back rapidly. If you're just cutting it, you're not sending root extradates off at the ground. You're just cutting it off, you're not adding stress. And what stress does to a plant when it's being tugged is not only advantage of getting the microbes to gather its food for it, it also pushes down a deeper root system because it doesn't want to get pulled out of the ground, it wants to survive. So it's in the best interest for the microbes for this plant to survive too. That's why they rush up and help it. Because without the plant photosynthesizing and putting the goodness and energy and the carbon dioxide and the sunlight into the ground, the microbes have got nothing to eat. And without plants, you've got dirt. Without dirt, you've got no goodness for the soil. You won't have soil microbes. You're gonna have bare soil with no life. So it's in the best interest that the microbes help this plant to recover. So they work in unison with another. The plants need the microbes as much as the microbes need the plant. And like I said, that tugging motion, deeper root system, a lot healthier for your plant. Ah, she couldn't have timed that any better. Check out this little beauty, my mechanical cow. She has great bloodlines, proven, reliable, and eats the grass like there's no tomorrow. And she does everything exactly like a cow would do, but more uniform. She keeps the pasture in a vegetative state. So when it comes really tall, stalky and stemmy, really woody, thick, it slashes it off to keep it at that level about a foot high in a vegetative state where then it starts to grow again, full of energy. Instead of being... Copious amounts of dead leaves on this forage. So all I know it's come to that pensioner stage. Starting to drain in energy, the cows have gone through and nibbled all the leaves off and it's leaving me this woody stem which is high in fibre. It's going to take the rumen twice as long to break down this woody material as it does nice fresh green matter, which is higher in energy. So what it does is it slashes it off that foot high, which you want to keep on the ground to help armour the soil and keep the sun out. So it keeps it there in a vegetative state, above the teenage stage, of it. oh sorry, but above the diaper stage. So it's in that foot stage. So it's just on the verge of that teenage stage where it keeps it in that rapid growth. So it keeps it vegetative for me. Slashes it off exactly like the cows do when they come through and break it off with their tongue. So it's cleaning up what the cows did it. What she also does is as you can see, wherever I pick up, there's litter bank spread across the entire ground. The whole surface, has evenly distributed 
that litter bank across the surface, and that's why I love the wood slasher. It doesn't leave a windrow, it cuts it off and just even distribute across the ground. As though a cow would when they break that sap cycle, they stand on it and they distribute it across the ground, like I showed you there before. That is just a big area of thatch. This. Without stating the obvious, why is this thatch layer so beneficial? What this armour also does is acts as a thermal blanket on the ground. It regulates the temperature. Not only can it hold the moisture in the long moisture in the ground longer because it's not heating up, it's keeping that ground cool or at a constant temperature. So during the it's spring at the moment, it's going to get raging hot. It's 31 degrees today first day of spring. Summer is nearly here, we might even have a spring. It's what's why it's important to have, regulate the temperature. If this was just bare dirt, the soil would heat up and below the soil would be that hot, it'd be hard for microbes to survive. This thermal insulation or thermal insulator regulates the temperature. It allows the grass or the foliage to heat up, which then puts a little bit of warmth into the ground during the day but it more so keeps it cool during the day. The sun can't heat the depth of that soil up. It keeps the soil cool during the day. And if at night time, because the grass and the, the fodder or the decaying matter is holding, holding heat, it allows the heat to then participate and move in through the ground. So it's regulating or controlling the soil temperature, which is great for the soil microbe and soil life it can't kill it. It's not getting too cold and it's not getting extremely hot. It's regulating the temperature across the ground, exactly like a thermal blanket would. What she's also doing for me is eliminating or stopping, preventing desertification. What I mean by that is if you let your pasture come high like this, I've got areas where I can't get in the gully and down by the creek I can't get in and slash it. You part those grass in those areas, I've done videos on it, and go right to the base of that plant. A lot of it is just dirt. You've got a big clump coming up, and then you've got basically multiple clumps of long grass coming up. From the outside, you look in and it looks really thick. It's not until you part it, you realize it's just clumps, and then there's big areas of open areas of soil. That's desertification. The higher the grass gets, the sun can't get through to the foliage to hit the ground and grow those legumes or plants which don't grow excessively high. So you're creating, or eliminating I should say, desertification. You keep your foliage cut down at a foot height, the sun then can go through and germinate and help promote the growth of all those smaller plants which run across the ground. They need sunlight too. They can't be constantly shadowed out by tall pasture. And by having the livestock lay the grass on the ground, building that thatch layer, likewise with the slasher, you're armoring the ground. That decays back into the soil. You're adding your fresh topsoil. Now when it rains, it hits the armor, slops the velocity of that rain, hits the armor, slows through. Instead of adding compaction and belting on the ground, the thatch slows it down. So it seeps through and has a chance to slowly seep into the ground. The more carbon you can get on the ground, the faster it decays back, the more moisture you can hold. And the reason why that is important, as you can see right in front of me here, I've got multiple areas like this across my property where the water runoff starts right up in the hills beyond her and rapidly flows down through these channels, ripping out, causing channel corrosion before the water ends up in the creek down the bottom. So the reason why you want to do this is to keep your soil on your property at all times and eliminate erosion. The more army you can get over the years on your property, like I mentioned, the more topsoil you can, you can maintain or build up, the more water you can store in the ground. Like those previous videos done, I've got a big erosion hole which you've seen I've put bales in and it's all it's slowed the flow it's growing and I've worked on the ground above it to slow the flow it's not like a cascading water effect now or waterfall over the edge and it's exactly the same as what I'm doing here 
I'm building the ground to limit the runoff of water on my property, to hold the soil and stop erosion through my property. Enough chit chat for now. I've got to jump on the tractor and get all this slash down. Move the cows out four days ago. So I need to get it laid down to give a chance of some fresh pasture to come through. There we have it, all done and dusted. Got it all slashed, roughly that foot high, laying that armor on the ground. As you can see, there was plenty of moisture I showed you during the video. So in a couple of weeks time, this should be really green. Have that green flush come through it. Similar to that paddock, you can see right there now. That was done three weeks ago. See all that green flush coming through? That's because of the moisture is retained in the ground because the armor on top. Righty -o, guys, we appreciate you guys hanging around to the very end. We hope you have a good morning, a terrific afternoon, and an awesome evening. Where are you watching this from? And we'll catch you later.